Yes, our viewers on Discovery Plus who've watched this from first ball would be the first to agree that while Mark Allen is dominant in terms of the scoreline, he's not been in top gear. That was confidently played, though. The right side of the blue this time round. Uh, he could play for that red just below the pink, which kind of develops the pink into pockets. And there's other reds he could play for. Now, should be able to get to that red just above the black. And once again, he hasn't quite got that cue ball under control. Can't get to the black from there, so... Back down for the blue or pink. Pre-match, Mark Allen was installed as a two to seven favorite to win. Found despite him winning the European Masters last season was an 11 to four outsider. Before a ball was struck, have to be honest, I thought fan might represent some value. <laughs> Not now. Now, has he spied a plant here, Mark Allen? He has. But could have done better with the cue ball again. Tough pink to the middle, tough black to the corner. He's taken any risks at all today. Playing the safety. Trying to push the ground safe. But not quite managed that. This joke is the new Mark Allen. Risk averse. Well, I can understand him not wanting to give his opponent an easy chance and keep him under pressure. I understand that. And the cue ball was tight under the cushion. Difficult to drop the pink in, dead weight. Difficult to part the black. So there's a case for playing the safety. When you're in this kind of position, you need positive thoughts. Fan will no doubt harken back to the fact that in the final qualifying round, he was 4-0 down to another multiple world ranking event winner, Stephen Maguire, and came back to win. Handily, in fact, by 10 frames to 6. <clears throat> That's what booked Fan's Crucible debut.
but at the moment it's turning into something of an ordeal. From frame one, Alan's been sitting there with a big mug full of warm water, actually, sipping it, using it to keep his hands nice and warm in the arena. And now it is effectively a, a one-table arena because as soon as the Hossein Vafai Ding Junwei match finished, which was during the interval of this one, the dividing wall went up. Everyone in the crucible can see this table. Wow. That's more like it. But he's lost the cue ball. Good pot. Does it go into that left corner of this red? One. Well, that's okay. Developed another red and the blue not too difficult. I don't think the green is in the way. He scored very freely in qualifying. Six. One century against Maguire, breaks of 95, 88. Four others over 50. In the previous qualifying round, You beat Julian Boyko. 10-8, made two centuries in that match. Six others over 50. He needs something similar here to try and force his way back into the reckoning. Try and get some form of foothold. He's going to be on the red to the middle. Did well to get well. there.
13. Twenty-one. Remember, on the first morning of the championship, Pang Junzu went 5-0 down to Ronnie O'Sullivan. And was still able to make the title holder's life uncomfortable towards the end of the match. 26. Don't write off fan yet. Twenty-seven. Yeah, just push that red a little closer to the cushion. It's not going to be easy from here. One more easy red, but hampered badly by this red near the cushion. Let's keep running. Just about got there. 29. 30. Now, pre-interval, he missed a couple of blacks off the spot. Can't imagine this one will go astray. It's all about position, though. <coughs> yeah, another couple of inches would have been better. Excellent pot. That pushed another ball safer. Well, the green looks to be in the way of trying to play the cannon to the red. Not impossible. Who's an ours as a fan vacates the table? But really, from that yellow, there wasn't an awful lot of future in the break. And look where the brown was. Still is. The second frame was really tight. Fan missed the last red to the green pocket using the rest. Left everything there for Allen. But he played a few poor positional shots. Ended up missing the brown. But then Fan 
overcut the black off its spot and left it unmissable in the jaws of this top left hand corner pocket. This is going to be another tight frame. Well, he could have had a go at the pot there. But with the colours being as they are, maybe felt there was no value in it. Yeah, tap on the table there from Mark Allen because he appreciated that attempted snooker, which he's got. And the red far enough away from the cushion to leave it on if he just decides to roll up to it. These kind of frames not especially attractive, but they are so vital. Now, this is the black that Fan missed in the second frame to draw level at 1-1. And even the most uncultured novice would knock that black in, which, of course, Alan did. Well, and a miss. As he hits yellow first there. Something you pull. Have help with the yellow, please. Yeah, help with the yellow, please, he says, because where the yellow is, oh. it, it's obstructing the path to the black. So, just got to get this right. Yeah, the help for Olivier Martil is coming from his That's marker. That way. Yeah, we'll, we'll back again, that way, half the ball again, a bit more. Right, come towards me now. A full ball towards me. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then a half quarter ball that way. Fraction that way now. Fraction. Yeah, that looks good, yeah? Okay. Me? okay. Always good to get the help. And that was the, the voice of Rob Spencer, the marker. Just caught it, and he's delighted with that. Now, can Van get the snooker here? If you can send that red towards the green pocket, leave the cue ball where the red is, and send it back down the table. He's got to miss the jaws of the pocket, though. Couldn't play it. The red must have been going very close to that green pocket. Excellent safety.
Now I should be able to hit the red off the right side cushion. If we just look at this execution again. But you have no idea where the red's going to go. If he lands up to it, the yellow should protect him. If he plays it at pace, which he has done, well, is he going to leave a free ball? Foul. A kiss may have done. And a miss. So that will be going back. And at this stage, with the balls as awkward as they are, these four penalty points and potentially more are useful. And a miss. Mark Allen full. Back. Didn't even bother to take a few steps and contemplate the pot along the, the ball cushion. Why would you? Just having the cue ball put back seems entirely sensible. Okay, Mark. Well, it looks like without playing it with a touch of bottom. And I think that's what he's playing now, to try and create the angle. There it is. And where's this red going? Oh, oh where's the white going? Mark Allen four. I think he might be playing again here. Uh, very unfortunate to have found that middle pocket, the cue ball. But again, fortunate that. The red's not on. I'd be surprised if he put in him in again, but he has done. There's half a chance of getting the cue ball in behind the black here. So with those 12 penalty points, Mark Allen hits the front in the frame. Could so easily have got him behind the black and thicker kiss, and he's got him behind the pink. Surprised they put him in that. <coughs> Looks pretty good. Got him again. Is he going to trust to look again and hit it hard? Now, this time, he lands up to it. Now, he didn't play that shot when he had it the last time round and he had the cover with the yellow. Ten minutes since his last pot. A quote from Mark Allen before the tournament began, actually on media day. Sticking in my mind, he said he doesn't mind whether he makes a 30 break or not as long as he keeps winning matches. For him now, it's not about the style, it's about the substance. Oliver Martial right above it's that ball. ball there as it touched. In fact, he's left a touching ball. Joe, he's guaranteed a snooker if he wants to play it a certain way, but if he were to try and nestle in behind the blue and subsequently in behind the brown, that would be a fiendish snooker, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, that's what he's looking at now, is where can he leave it where it's not quite easy to come off the side cushion and hit the red. He could develop the blue and the brown, as you say, which is going to need But I think that shot underlines his current approach. And he might have left a gap. <clears throat> I think it's more dangerous with the gap. And it looks like the middle pocket's in the way. I don't think he could hit the red full ball. He got as close to the middle pocket as he dare last time round. Now this surely is going to be a free ball. Foul. And a miss. And a free ball. Mark Allen. Foul miss, free ball, full house. And it could be 5-0. and oh. That would be bingo for Allen, wouldn't it? A guaranteed first session lead. Well, well worth taking the blue on because he doesn't need the brown. Blue ball. He's played it too hard to get to the next red. If he plays the pink, he's going to have to play it with left-hand side on the cue ball. There's the side. And he's played it superbly. Great shot back. Seven. 17 points, the difference. He needs the yellow. Red, black, yellow. Eight. Perfect angle on the black to get down for the yellow. Just checking the scoreboard. It provides good news. Seventeen. Twenty-seven in front, twenty-five on. Fan needs a snooker. You'd like to see this double go in though. Yeah, that just 20. makes sure. Two snookers to tie. I think he'll play on. Unless he can double this one as well. Not far away. Not far away. 24. And the frame. Mark in Allen. Steel City, Mark Allen is a man of steel these days. And these newfound tactics are working so far this morning.
Sergio, 5-0. And I think towards the end of that frame, Fan was tactically schooled by his far more experienced opponent. He's just not taking his chances as well as we expected him to. He's had some bad running. He's also missed some poor balls. That black off the spot to level up at 1-1 one, one could have affected him. But this is the crucible, and when you go behind here, it's so difficult to try and regain your thoughts. Think positive. How do you think positive when you're 5-0 down? He's going for his shots. He went for them in the last frame, but they need to start going in. One thing we do know, Mark Allen is guaranteed to lead now going into the concluding session this evening. This is a whitewash so far for Mark Allen. You know, these two have now played 10 frames against each other on the professional tour, and Mark Allen has won all of them. Their only previous meeting to this was in the quarterfinal of the German Masters last year. That was a great run in that tournament for Fan, showing us what he's capable of, but it ended abruptly. Mark Allen didn't just whitewash him, it was a rout. Allen scored 438 points in that match to Fan's 71. Allen making breaks of 86, 69, 68, 59 and 52. It's not been so one-sided today, but the scoreline is exactly the same. <laughs> Thank you, frame six. Mark Allen to break. Mark Allen looking to consolidate. Fan Zheng Yi looking to get off the mark. Yes, yeah, so and not the best break off that, although he has covered the red to the right corner. The cue ball not close enough to the ball cushion. A fraction slower, and that red was on to the right corner, and he knocked one in earlier, made 50 from it. Yep, that's OK, unless he can see the red to the middle. Don't think he can. The first frame today lasted 30 minutes, the second 26. The one we've just seen, 32. So it's been quite slow going. And the reason I'm making that point is that more matches are scheduled at 2.30. This afternoon, Mark Williams comes back 5-4 down against Jimmy Robertson. John Higgins, another member of the famed class of 92, starts out against David Grace. So, if they carry on at this pace, it's entirely possible the scheduled nine frames won't be completed. Yeah, it's tough snooker. Good safety. I wouldn't say negative, it's just good safety play. Good safety there from Fan, and there's pressure on this. And that wasn't the best kiss for Mark Allen. Average shot time, 
favour in Allen at the moment. But that's because most of fans' play has been safety. He what? hasn't really got in amongst the balls much. When he does get in among, amongst the balls, he plays pretty quickly. Well, chance here. What can he do? Six. Choice of reds. Seven. Ideally, he'd like to come down for that red just to the left of the black. And if he doesn't quite get onto that red, the red above the black he'd be on. So choice of two balls there. That's one set I'd be playing. Doesn't have to play for those. But that's what he's played. And he's nicely on this red by the black. Didn't pot it cleanly. And that's why he's on this little cut back black. Now, can he go directly into the reds here? Miss that red above the black. Not playing it. Last couple of shots have graphically illustrated the fact that Fan is very much a left eye dominant player. Cues under the, the left eye. One. He's in good company there. The very first winner of this World Championship in 1927, and he remained undefeated until 1946. Joe Davis. He was left eye dominant as well. Aggressive. And that red just coming up by the middle pocket has saved him. He wasn't on anything Wait, until that red came round. But he deserved to be on something. He caught the reds beautifully there. Very positive, very aggressive. But now he's got to finish it off and come down and take this red closest to the left corner. That allows the black to go in there. There's other reds he could play for, but that's the best one. <coughs> well, he's OK on this red to the right corner. He's got an angle to get the right side of the black. Yep, he doesn't hang about when he's in amongst the balls and this will bring his time down for sure. I mean, when you're in trouble with safety play, you've got to take your time to think how to get out of that. He can score when he won the European Masters to make his massive career breakthrough last season. Had a century in beating Kyron Wilson. Same thing, Dave Gilbert in the quarterfinals. Ditto, Graham Dot in the semi-finals. And then two centuries in overcoming Ronnie O'Sullivan with a title on the line. There, though, 
That was a little lax. Incorrect side of the blue. It's a lot lax, really. You know, it can make a difference between winning the frame and losing it. If it's coming towards the reds, it's practically unmissable, the next shot. This one... 54. It's missable, and there's pressure on it. Nothing safe. Well played, and the right side of the blue this time. Getting lots of support from the crowd. And now, Joe, not just a chance to get off the mark, but also to emulate Pang Jun Zhu and Wu Yizhe, who, in this championship, both made centuries on their crucible debuts. 61. Applause for frame ball. 68. He's took these very well. 69. Mark Allen pushed the boat out with that long red that he attempted to the right corner. Got the double kiss. And this young man has taken them superbly. 76. Don't forget he was 4 0 down <coughs> to a great player in the qualifying, Steve Maguire. So he can do it. And this type of snooker will give him the chance to. 84. Eighty-five. He's a twenty-two year old from the city of Harbin in northern China. The city internationally famous for its Ice and Snow Festival, where they have those wonderful 92. ice sculptures. Until this, Fan was being frozen out himself. 93. Now, though. 100. He's shown what he's capable of. 100. One hundred and one. Yes, and they've got the whole room to themselves. And it throws a completely different aspect on the game. One hundred and eight. It's like a different venue when that screen goes up. And you've got the whole of the crucible watching it. 113. He's going to be 5 1 down with by far the highest break of the session. 117. One hundred and twenty-two. It's going to have to be a double. Wait for it. Not a total clearance, but a century on his crucible debut. What a way to get off the mark. Now, that was more like it from fans' perspective, Joe. 122, the break. Yeah, he found his, his game there, didn't he? I mean, he, he hasn't been far away from it for me. You know, he's played quite well. But as I said earlier, missing the black off the spot in the second frame probably affected him a little. But he's competed in every aspect of the game except the scoring. And now he's opened that side of the game. I remember another 5-1 scoreline. It was actually a result in the old 
Scottish Masters, Marco Fu lost 5-1 to Ken Doherty. The only frame he won, he made a 147, won a car. <laughs> that, that's where the old saying comes from, doesn't it? It only wins you one frame. The only thing was, he didn't have a driving license. <laughs> What's the moral of that story? I'll let you work it out yourself. It has been an unconventional session, I think it's fair to say. Mark Allen winning the first five frames in studious fashion. And then the highlights in terms of fluency coming from Fan Zhengyi. 122 break in frame six. So he's got the foothold he required. Thank Can you. He Thank make you more of this seven. mini comeback. You know, just got a glimpse of the crowd there. Full house, well, practically. Well, it was the long red that cost him in the last frame. Hasn't left anything easy. Fan will try to keep his positive thoughts going. Got so close. Uh, is he going to get away with it? I think not. The red is on to the middle or the corner. He got so close to this. Played it very positively. Trying to get that cue ball out of the ball carrier. Okay, right? A shot, though, that clearly underlined how tight these middle pockets are. Totally unforgiving. Has he overcut it? He's overcut that because he tried to find the gap between the reds. That's the simple reason why he missed that shot. Looking to find the gap there, look, which he found. Had he played it thicker, he'd have made contact with the red. From there, he wouldn't have known what was happening. So, an easy starter for fun. Fanged in the pace of the table beautifully now. Six. Olivia Martil just doing the work with the pink and my word he did well to get it in that gap didn't he? He's still going.
can't be touching the red. 13. Yep, round of applause for that. Look at the gap he got that in. Twenty one. Next few shots are critical. Yes, he may well leave an angle on the black here to open more reds up. Easier to do it this time round than wait for the last red. And that's what he's played. So nice angle this. And you need a little bit a little bit of luck when you're going into them. You've got to pop the black. There's no point in opening the reds up and missing the black. All your concentration has got to go into the pot, not the cannon. He was going so well there. And, and by my reckoning, that's the third black he's missed off the spot in this session. Now, the ideal angle on the blue to go into the reds. It's got to be positive here. Yeah, he could play for one of the two loose reds. But that was always the shot. He was guaranteed to be on the red to the left middle if he caught them full in the face. Six. Looks like it is a little straight on this red. So can't get the right side of the blue. Now he could Seven. pinch a little bit. Now choice again. Does it go into them? He'd be unfortunate not to be on a red if he went into them. I'm surprised he didn't play that shot. Well, I mean... He was perfect on the blue to go into the reds there, and he would have been on the red for sure to the right corner. Now he needs something special to keep the break going. The shot, he was left was easily missed, even at quiet pace. At brisk pace, it was so, so difficult. I suppose the only good thing now is that those four reds surrounding the pink are still tightly bunched together. Well. Now... Will Fang Zengi open these reds up? Not quite the same shot, this, because there's no guarantee of being on that red to the right corner. But if he could catch them finish... And that's the shot that Mark Allen had the last time round. He could so easily have played for the loose reds there. Six. But chose to play the aggressive shot. 
And it could win him this round. Alan has been a professional since 2005. Only until recently has he started to be a little defensive, a little reluctant to go into the pack. Before, he was a very aggressive player. We made this point earlier on Discovery Plus. Mark Allen, indisputably, is the player of the season. He's won the Northern Ireland Open, successfully defending the title. He's won the UK Championship and the World Grand Prix, also runner-up in the British Open. But he's not been the player of 2023. He hasn't made a century in his last nine matches. At times, since winning the World Grand Prix, he's looked unrecognisable from the player who can devastate opponents. 13. And maybe his reluctance to go into the pack there was symptomatic of his newfangled approach. So 32 the difference and when he takes his red to the right corner it opens the way for the other two to the left corner 20 and this is a great chance well Maybe the red doesn't go to that right corner pocket. Well, if it's on this red to the middle, he's just having a look at it. 27. Not quite the angle that he would have liked. The cue ball going into the reds. Had it been straight, I'm sure he would have played it. Just this pink needed. 20. Nothing fancy. Doesn't need to screw into the reds. Just make sure of the pink. 46 in the game. It's pink, 52 with 51 left. Well, he did attack the Reds and surprised he played it. 34. Not quite a plant, but he could either try and cut the red to the middle or play the double. As long as he doesn't leave the reds on, he could play the double and screw the cue ball to the black cushion. See, didn't want to leave the reds on. It's only one snooker. It's not the best shot. More bottom on the cue ball wouldn't have left a possible pot on here. Great shot, One. but shouldn't have been allowed to play it. And the, the red behind the pink is in a great place for a snooker.
Yes, and if he does get that successful snooker, the balls are in a lovely place to clear up. Eight. So this is the big shot. Try and get onto the black or pink and drop him behind that last red for a good snooker. Pot. Nine. And now, Fanjengi will be wishing he didn't leave that red on to the right middle. And all he needed to do was just play a little bit more bottom on the cue ball. Wouldn't have been on. And now he could be in big trouble. Doesn't want the red near a cushion. 60. Needs to be out in open play. Something like that. That's a good snooker. Every chance of leaving a free ball. And if he plays it slow and misses it, he's snookered again. That's the ideal snooker, that. Now, he could play off two cushions here, that's what he's looking at, and leave the cue ball near the middle pocket if he misses it. That way there's no free ball. He's played it too hard, he's got to hit it. Yeah, well played. Not out of the woods yet, though. A nice benefit there for Fan. Would have been the green running safe. Clearly, it hasn't. And this is more trouble. Yeah, another great shot. He didn't give any thought to the free ball last time round. He needs to give thought to the free ball. If he misses the red, he doesn't want to leave a free ball because that would be a disaster. Looking at playing just before the middle pocket with a lot of right hand side on the cue ball. It's whether he can get enough side on the cue ball. So if he plays this and plays it at speed, needs to leave the cue ball somewhere near the green pocket in case he misses it. Oh, well escaped. Well escaped. That was a tough snooker. Alan wanted to miss the yellow there. Head dropped when he made contact. This is close. Or it would have been without the kiss on the blue. So just to reiterate, Alan, 36 points behind. 35 on, still needing one snooker. He's already plundered one frame today. From 50 adrift, he made a 76 clearance. I think this would be even more of an escape. 
would be a crushing blow indeed for Fan. Well, that's another very well-worked-out snooker. And again, not easy to hit. Is it two very good ones so far? Similar scenario, though. Mustn't leave a free ball. Mustn't leave the red on. Yep, hit it well and push the black safe, which helps his cause. He's having to fight hard to win this frame. And he hasn't won it yet. Well, possible chance to win this seventh frame. Mark Allen prepared to battle through frames of snooker like never before. But also battling fan. And really, Joe, that should be that. Yeah, he should pop this one. He's got to be concerned about the in-off, but he shouldn't go near that middle pocket. One. Well, Mark Allen... Made him fight hard for this way to win this frame. Three. Shown plenty of mental fortitude to win these couple of frames. 
Well... Seventeen. It is officially a fan a revival. At 5 0 down, things were looking very worrying. Now at 5 2, hope springs eternal. So, this, of course, the start of day three at the Crucible. Busy day, three finishes for you, including the match we're watching. That will conclude this evening. This afternoon, it's Mark Williams against Jimmy Robertson on Eurosport 1. Now, remember that Williams, even though I thought he played pretty well in the first session, trails Robertson 5-4. Also in action today, John Higgins. He starts out against David Grace, the Yorkshireman, who came through qualifying. John Higgins was in the arena this morning quite early, just sampling the atmosphere. And these are the evening matches in the snooker city of Sheffield. Mark Allen will finish off against Fan Zheng Yi. And on table one, starting out, it's the all-English clash between a couple of veterans. Rob Milkins, The Seed, and Joe Perry. OK, then, at least one more frame to be played in this session. Two are scheduled. Whether they'll squeeze them in or not is very much open to question. What we've seen so far has been an interesting session without any great fireworks, apart from fans' 122 break in the sixth frame to get off the mark in some style. Mark Allen certainly not firing on all cylinders, but he's doing enough, and that's what he's been doing all season. All season... Three ranking titles to his credit. Almost £600,000 in total prize money. Regardless of whether he wins or loses here today, that figure will go over 600000 So it's been a wonderful campaign for him. And, of course, with Mark Allen, apart from the fact he would love to win a title that's been top of his wish list for many a year, if he were to capture the title, maybe... If he reaches the, the final, he could be installed starting next season as the world number one. I know that's another ambition of his. Yeah, and what a terrific ambition to realise. Well, as Fan walks back to the table, he should be feeling good. It was 5-0 down, it's 5-2 now. Seats, if he could win this Thank in the next 5-4... Mark Allen to break. He'll feel like he's got out of jail. And the cue ball, not close enough to the cushion. This red. To the left, he's on to the corner or the middle. Great shot. One. Terrific shot. From Fan Genji. What a great shot right in the middle of the pocket. I said he'd be feeling good, and he is, obviously. Now, ideally, this red next to the black is the one he's going to be playing for. Make the black available to both pockets. Now, can he hold for the black? If not, then it's back down for the blue. Six. 
Seven. And pretty straight on the blue. Well, it could work out well for him. Well. If this red goes in, he might be able to nudge another couple of reds out here. Yep, yeah, and I think he may be on the black. If not, he's definitely on the pink. But he'd like to be on the black. It's easier to get to the reds. Afraid not. <laughs> Looking a different player. All of a sudden, we can see why he won a tournament. Ninety. He's the world number thirty six. Fan. Twenty. And that's no obstacle to success. We saw last night Jack Jones playing with amazing poise to defeat Ali Carter. Jack Jones started this tournament world number 52. Time to be positive. Go into the reds. Oh, wow, look at that. That's positive, and he's on this red to the right corner. I think. 27. When I said go into them, I didn't think like that. I thought nudge a few out, stay on this red he's looking at. Now is he on it? He'd have to take the red to the bolt corner if he's not on it. He's having to turn this cue ball slightly. Lots of left hand side. Yeah, doesn't like it. The red to the green pocket looks the safer ball to take. He shouldn't leave anything if he misses it. The one to the yellow pocket is full of danger. And I think that may be a bit reckless to play it. Given the robust way he went into the bunch, he's really unlucky, actually. Well, he's playing this to bolt corner. Ah, oh, well, what can we say? He was leaving the red to the green pocket, had he missed it? This is super confidence. Brilliant shot. I'll tell you what I'm going to say, Joe. That was the shot of the session. Yeah, the bravest shot for sure. Well, followed it with not the best positional shot. Should have been straighter on this red. And I'm only picking at little things here, but... You know, Oh, nearly missed 34. it because of that fact. Well, wouldn't it be amazing, Phil, if he could win this room in the next and be only 5 4 down after being 5 0 down? He won't be thinking this way because he won't be aware of the time. But if he could win this frame at this visit, that would mean frame nine would begin. And with all of the momentum, that would be very much in his favour. Yes. 
just had a little bit too much adrenaline in that shot. So we screwed it by a foot or so. Still got a pot on. There it is. And he's played it well, perfectly, on the blue or pink. And he's certainly quick when he's in amongst them. The two reds to the right of the black, kind of protecting the black. Difficult to get onto it without leaving yourself a little low on the black. Doesn't really want to play that. 55 the lead, so still needs a couple of reds. He's took the risk. 56. And that's okay. You can just about pot black. One more red needed after this black. <coughs> and every chance of making another century here. The Chinese boys are... <laughs> They're really showing us what they've got. Seventy. Ooh, Yizza made back to back centuries. Seventy one. Can Fan Singy do the same here? It took ages for Fan to make his first century as a professional on the tour. Wasn't because he didn't have the ability. Basically, he had the idea he didn't want to make any old century. He wanted his first century to be a 147. It didn't work out, so he gave up on that and started making them. And now he's making plenty. 85. Uh, just look how quick he is. 86. His shot time has certainly come down. It's down to 25 seconds a shot now, but I'm sure that's going to go down even more. Ninety-three. Ninety-four. <laughs> just lost the cue ball a little, but... The way he's playing, this looks like a formality. One hundred and one. Yeah, well played. Keeping it going. Yeah. This is a tough one, though. If you should get it, the brown even tougher. 106. Can't stop him. What a transformation in fortunes. An hour ago, he was halfway to being whitewashed. Forget that now.
I am a fan of fan. How could you not be after a display like that? His second century of the match. Now, Joe, I've just been doing some statistical work. I reckon he's the 18th player to make two or more centuries in his debut match at the Crucible. Some others, Fergal O'Brien, Lou Hashan, David Gray, Ryan Day, Jamie Jones, Jackson Page, Tian Peng Fei, Drew Henry, Teb Chara Nu, Kao Yu Peng, Gary Wilson, Alfie Burden, Michael Wosley, Jamie Cope, as you mentioned, Wu Yiza, and now Fan Zheng Yi. He's in a good club there, isn't he? I mean, how difficult is that, you know, to make two centuries in debut? Very, very good. But he looks superb now, doesn't he? He looks a player. We know he's a player. He's won a tournament. Beating Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final, no less. But now we're seeing it. What's he got? Mark Allen must be concerned. At 5 0, it was a walk in the park. Now, there's a, a squall. Storm clouds are approaching. If he loses this frame, although he would be in front going into tonight, the moral victor would be his opponent. 6 3 would still be acceptable and quite cosy. 5 4, that would lead Mark Allen to have quite a, an uncomfortable afternoon. Yeah, really agree with that. What a big frame this last one is. 6-3 or 5-4. Even sounds big, doesn't it? And Fan Zheng Yi has done wonders to get this match back on schedule. He won one frame in 12 minutes. The last in 11. That's why they're playing the full complement of nine. Thank you. The final frame of this session, Fan Zheng Yi to break. Can Fan go into lunch feeling good, even though he'll be trailing? Well, even if he loses this, I think he'll be feeling good from 5 0 down, but he'll be feeling great if he wins this frame. He's won a lot of fans here this afternoon, this morning, this afternoon. And that red going towards that corner. And this is the chance, you would say, the way he's playing. It's a tough red. But if it should go in, he'd be off again. Well, he couldn't have played that any more positive than that, could he? It's not a gimme, this black, but what a great shot this was. I'm thinking about dropping it in, coming off two cushions for the black. He's stunned across the table for it. I'm loving this. Absolutely loving it. And it just underlines Eight. why... Two session matches, lengthy matches, all such compelling viewing. Gives players breathing space. Nine. Momentum shifts. Well, I didn't think he played that one particularly well. He's got to play for the last loose red now. Thought he would have left an angle on the black there to go into them. Nothing for being straight here on the blue. 60. Can he get the right side of the blue to open the reds up? He's smiling, which means it's straight. Six. 
17. Just again lost the cue ball two or three inches further back. Would have been a good angle on the blue to go in and out of ball with lots of right hand side on the cue ball. So close, so close. More side needed. 22. On Zengi, 22. Another Mark Allen error. Yeah, that little flick on the black, but he shouldn't have been near it. He's left a chance for Fan again. Never easy to play it at that pace, but he hasn't left anything easy. He has left a red to the port corner. But not an easy shot. Well, that had to go in the way he played it. Could have done with just being a little bit harder. Being the right side of the blue. Last time they played, I think I'm one five nil. So this is a little bit of a wake up call for Mark. Don't think he realised how good Fan was. Seven. Now he can play for the loose red here, or go into them. Very positive shot. Mark oh, Allen is right. world class. Players who are world class do that kind of thing. Thirteen. And that. Not ideal on the pink or blue. Apart from class, I'll tell you one thing that Mark Allen has got in abundance, bottle. You'll need it in this frame. He could do without this spotting. 
And that certainly right. favours him. Pink available to both corners. In this vicinity of the table, normally 26. Mark Allen is mustered. He's control of the cue ball at the business end. Up there with the very best of them. 27. He took a risk, didn't he? The opening red. Played it to the yellow pocket. He was leaving reds on had he missed that. But he played the positive shot, played for the blue. Then split the reds open. 34. Trying to win this frame at this visit. No reason why he shouldn't. Doesn't need the Four. awkward red by the black, although it favours him being a left hander. Forty-one. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Had a quick look at the scoreboard there, fan. Forty-nine. Spot now available. Fifty four. Another red in the colour, so it needs to be the right side of the pink. Fifty five. Well, he may have to play for that red near the black now. As I say, favours a left-handed player. Sure. 61. 39 points the lead. Fred and here. Should see him safe. And it's going to be a very interesting match this evening. Now both players have found the heads. Just this pink needed then for a 6-3 lead, barring snookers. Typically tenacious. 68. Alan didn't want any messing around and the disappearance of the penultimate red means that there won't be any. McAllen 69. And the fifth. Fan Jengi concedes. What a session that was. Fan showed his abilities with two centuries but the winner was Mark Allen 6-3 up four more needed to go into the last 16 he will be quietly satisfied with a fighting display 
So that's just the first segment of snooker at the Crucible today. Coming up at 2.30 in around 45 minutes' time, a couple of cracking contests involving two members of the famed class of 1992. Mark Williams, 5-4 down against Jimmy Robertson, who I thought performed really well in the first session. John Higgins starts out his latest Crucible campaign against David Grace, a qualifier from right here in the county of Yorkshire. OK, then, that's it from the famous old Crucible for now. It's been a really good start to the day. Hossein Vafai in defeating Ding Junwei played simply sublime snooker. Ding was swamped in the end. The man from Iran threw to take on the defending champion Ronnie O'Sullivan in the second round. That should be interesting. And then Joe and myself were commentating on Mark Allen building a 6-3 lead over Fan Zheng Yi. They come back tonight to finish off. For now, from Joe and myself, it's a very good afternoon.